today I want to tell you about six brands that you're probably going to be very surprised that I have not tried yet because these are very popular brands, especially in the smaller beauty community. And I, I don't know why I haven't tried any of these. And these are all brands that have been on my to try list for so long. And I need to get my shit together, but they just have not come out with something that's really spoken to me and that's really made me excited, which is the reason why I haven't really picked up anything from them. But let's just get into the list because I want to share this with you and see if you are as surprised as I am that I haven't tried these yet. So the first brand on my list is Sugar Pill, and the reason why I have not tried Sugar Pill yet, and this is such a petty little thing, but for me, when it comes to eyeshadow pans, I really, really don't like when pants are really, really big, especially when it comes to single shadows, and I don't know why. Like, I really don't feel like that is something that should bother me that much, because the prices of Sugar Pill is not that expensive compared to, like, other indie brands that I have bought from. Like, I've definitely bought shadows from other brands that have normal size pants that are the same price as the big ones from Sugar Pill, so I don't know what I'm waiting for, honestly, but I think also the fact that most of their shadows are just rainbow shadows shadows and I don't think I really need any rainbows in my collection anymore because I have like most of my basic shadows already except maybe like a good red which I know Sugar Pill has also a yellow would be nice to have like a good single yellow in my collection but for me it's one of those things when I have a big pan I don't want like a big pan to go with my small pants because I feel like it just looks not messy, I'm not like an OCD person or anything like that, but it just annoys me when pan sizes are different than normal, so that's like the only reason why I haven't ordered anything from Sugar Pill. Also, they're pretty expensive, so I don't know. At some point though, I would love to really try Sugar Pill. Let me know down below if you try them. Are they really worth the hype? Because I've heard a lot of people say that when they first came out, they were like so good and they were some of the best rainbow colored shadows that you could find, but now I feel like these days there are so many other brands that are just killing it when it comes to colorful shadows. So let me know how you feel about this. Do you feel like Sugar Pill is still worth the hype? Should I try them? Because I would love to at some point. And I don't know why, what happened to their new release. Weren't they supposed to come up with something new in December or something? I know they sneak peeked like some kind of pastel shades or I don't even remember. It's been so long, but I really was going to pick some of those up, but I haven't heard anything about it. So if you know anything about that, if you know an update, also let me know about that because I have no idea what happened to that. So the next brand on my list is Dose of Colors, and I don't know where I first started hearing about Dose of Colors or, or who started talking about it or what, but none of their releases have like really been the perfect palette for me. Like, I love the idea of having like their five pen monochromatic palettes. I think that is such a good idea, but I also know for myself that I probably wouldn't reach for it. It's not the kind of palette that I would like to do a review on because it is monochromatic and so on. So it's just not really, it hasn't been perfect for me. I almost picked up the Snow Angels palette that they released last. I don't know why I didn't, honestly. I really don't know. I don't know if it's because I can't get it at like Sephora or something like that. And I don't even know where I would order it. I'm guessing they probably have it on... Ulta has Dose of Colors now, right? I feel like they didn't before, but I feel like Ulta has Dose of Colors now. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I have not tried the brand yet. Like, I really would like to. I guess I'm kind of just waiting for them to come out with a, some kind of a different palette that really speaks to me. But I've heard so many good things about the formula that I'm like, why have I not tried you yet? And whenever I'm like, I want to try something new, it's just never what I think of. I usually just go to some other kind of indie brand and I'm like, that looks interesting, that looks more up my alley, that looks more colorful. And so it just kind of goes down my list and it just sort of stays there with the other things that I want to try, but I still haven't. So yeah, I don't know. Should I try Dose of Colors at one point? Does any of you have any bad experiences with Dose of Colors? I would love to know because if I can have an excuse to not buy all of these brands, that would be great. So thank you so much if you can like talk me out of any of these. But if you can't talk me out of it, also thank you because that means I really should try them. So if you have any experience with Dose of Colors, leave it down below so I can read it because I'm very curious about the brand. I really do want to try something eventually. And the next one on my list, I've been so close to buying so many times and this is Color Drain. <sighs> Color Drain looks beautiful. They have a lot of really good releases. Their last palette that they came out with was so beautiful, but it reminded me way too much of the Try palette from Juvia's Place, which is why I never ended up picking up that one, because I just felt like they were kind of duping each other and I didn't need it, but the color story in that looks so pretty. Also, their uh, pressed pigment palette that they have looks so pretty. I've heard so many people say so many good things about it, but I've also seen some people not like it, so whenever I see kind of conflicting opinions, I'm like, I don't know 
know which side I would be on and if I would like it or not. And I also think that because I kind of have this rule for myself when it comes to palettes that if I don't buy it on launch date, the train has kind of passed because I want to be able to, if I am going to review something, I want to be able to review it pretty quickly. And if I don't buy it as soon as it launches, I probably just don't want it badly enough, if that makes sense. So I think it's just one of those things that it, the stars just hasn't really aligned yet and I need them to come out with something that really speaks to me more. And the reason why I didn't end up getting like their pressed pigments is because at first they were released as singles. I feel like if they had only come out with a palette, I probably would have bought that palette. But also it's all mattes and so I don't really like all matte palettes. And it's just one of those things that I haven't really found like the perfect thing from them yet that's really made me go, oh yes, that's finally my time to try out the brand, you know what I mean? I probably could have even put Linda Hallberg on this list, but I just ended up picking up her new palette. So that's another brand that I've kind of like had on my mind for so long and I've just been waiting for the perfect time to try out the brand. And they finally released something that I wanted and so now I get to try it. And this is how I feel about all of the brands on my list. I'm just waiting for that perfect time for them to come out with something that really speaks to me and something that I get really excited about that I want to review. So yeah, no, I have not yet tried Color Rain. I really would like to. The next brand is a brand that I see Beaut Bean talk about all the time. She loves this brand and that is Ace Beauté or Ace Beauty or Ace Beauté. I really don't know how to pronounce that word, but I'll put it on the screen for you so you can see how it's written because maybe that tells you something more than it tells me. So. They have a lot of really colorful palettes, a lot of beautiful palettes. I don't know why I haven't tried them. I feel like it was because they came out with the vault last year and I'm not really like a vault kind of person. As I say that, I did order the Kaleidos Cosmetics vault and I also ordered the Pinky Rose vault like last year. So I don't know why I'm saying that, but I feel like at the time when that vault came out, I just had so many other things on my mind that I wanted to get that I kind of just like dismissed it and I didn't want to just get one of the palettes. So I, I don't know, I really do want to try the brand and they have a lot of really beautiful palettes out and I don't know why I don't get more attracted to them than I do because I feel like I should. I feel like it's the kind of brand that is very much my aesthetic, it's very much the kind of things that I like but for some reason, I don't know if it's their packaging, I don't know if it's their square pans, I don't, I don't know what it is about their palettes that just doesn't really grab my attention like a lot of other brands do. I really don't know. I, I don't know. I, I They are definitely on my list of things that I would like to try this year. And I feel like we're still early in the year. I feel like I still have time, you know? Like, I feel like at the end of the year, I'm going to do a update on the video that I did last year of brands that I want to try in 2019. So hopefully by the time 2019 is over, I will have tried Ace Beauté because they need to come out with something that I really want, you know? And I feel like they will. I have faith in them. I really feel like they're going to come out with something that I'm going to want to buy because I want to try their formula. I've heard of it's so good. My second to last brand is going to be Lethal Cosmetics. I've heard nothing but good things about Lethal and what really pushed me over the edge was I was watching Theresa's Dead the other day and she was saying that her palette that she got from Lethal is like one of the best formulas that she's ever tried in her life. And she did some swatches and I was just like, like they look so beautiful, they looked so pretty, but again, like the color stories that they have come out with, I know they now have like a build your own kind of palette, but the color stories that I previously had in the palettes that they released were like half neutrals and I just don't want to spend that much money on a half neutral palette. Like I just, you guys know me, you guys know that's not really my jam. I am starting to kind of learn how to incorporate neutrals more into my colorful looks but again, not make it more neutral than colorful. So it's like a balance that I'm trying to achieve to actually get some use out of the more neutral shades that I do have in my palettes because sometimes I feel bad that I don't even like touch them. Like I feel like I'm not getting my values worth by not using all of the shades in the palette. So I am trying to kind of throw a brown in there and you know, just kind of play around with it. But for the most part, like Lethal's palettes, the ones that I've come out with have just not really been 100% for me yet. But it's the kind, it, the formula of the shadows just looks so creamy and easy to work with and buildable and blendable and pigmented and just everything that I would want in a shadow and I really think that I would like that formula. So at some point I'm just crossing my fingers that they are going to come out with something that I am going to really love. So fingers crossed for that because I feel like it might happen at some point but it also might not because Lethal is not like 
the most colorful brand out there for indie brands. So it's also a European brand. So it is a little bit more expensive for me to order than if it was something that was based in the States. So that's also something to keep in mind. You know, I don't want to spend a bunch of money on something that isn't really like 100% my cup of tea. So I'm just going to wait. I'm going to wait and see, see what they come out with. And hopefully at some point there's going to be something that just makes me go, yes, I need you, you know? So the last brand on my list, let me just check and make sure that this is the last brand. Yep, the last brand on my list is going to be Gimme Glow. And the reason why I have not tried Gimme Glow yet is because same petty reason that I have for Sugar Pill, just that their pan sizes are so big. I need to get past that because I literally see so many people raving about Gimme Glow and their shadow looks beautiful. And I need to try them and I know that they have said recently that they are going to be releasing four pan build your own palettes. So as soon as they do that, I'm going to make an order because I need to stop delaying this because Gimme Glow has been on the top of my list of brands that I would like to try. And I need to just like get my shit together and actually order from them because I feel like I'm really going to love them. And Betty Jean has been talking so much about this brand that I feel like, you know, I trust her. You know, she's one of my best friends on here. And if she says that something is good, I'm pretty sure I'm going to like it. So I do really just need to, like I said, just suck it up and make an order because I just, I need to try them. I really, really, really need to try them. So those were all the brands on my list of eyeshadow formulas that I have yet to try, but I would like to try it. Let me know down below which ones are on your list. I would love to hear about it. So thank you so much for watching this video as always. I hope you enjoyed a bit of a chatty one because I like doing these. You know, they're very easy to film, they're easy to edit, they're fun to watch. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing and I will see you in my next one. Bye.